hello back again. Whilst you've been gone, I've just taken the salt away from our rock and our moon. Good effect this time, really pleased with that. This is dry now, so let us just put a few more colours in, add some more membranes to his head. Here we go, back to the blue. Let me just do this to these membranes around his hair, his head. Is this hair for a dragon? What is this, I wonder? I don't know. One interesting thing about dragons, everybody will say, oh, that wouldn't fly, would it? Just remember to remind them about those bumblebees. They said that about the bumblebees. There you go. These dragons are your imagination. You are creating these. They fly if you desire them to. Let us now just add some colour down these membranes and the spines of the wings here and down the front of the armour on his chest. Now for this, I need to come down a brush size. I don't want to be too huge with this and be out of control. I'm going to use quinacridone magenta. Have you ever seen that colour? Super for flowers. Those floral artists amongst you will know this colour. It's rich, it's thick, it's such a lovely pink. Look at this. We can take this and with a, what am I using? It's a number four. So with a number four brush from the tip, bring it down, more pressure, more pressure. Just keep adding until you've got a smooth, gentle line down the side of our dragon. Here we go, look. Good contrast against the sky there. Up against, nudge it here, up against the blue and just pull it round. This will give me the fine detail up here. This is what I'm wanting. Thin, thin brush stroke there. Smart, hard, sharp line down the edge here. And smooth painting, as smooth as you can make it for a nice finish. Look at this. Pull it round, draw it round. Now, load again, up here onto the tip of the, of the spine. Look at that. That's what you're looking for. Down here, through there. We'll use a larger brush, I think, when we get to the main part of the body, here. Again, it gives us more control. The larger the brush you use, of course, you'll find that you're getting less brush strokes in there. And that's the grand plan for a nice smooth finish. Down here. Let the paint run, let it go, let it go. Go to a larger brush, load with that. And then with this, you see, if we just bring that down through here, easier. It's easier. I know it's scary to start with and you think that you might not want to handle it, but trust me, if you can, with a bit of practice, and of course a good brush, lovely point on that brush, no two ways about it, down here and through there. Look at that. I also need to pop this colour in on his chest, for the armour of his chest. I'm calling him a him. I don't know whether he is. Do you think he is? Could be a little girl. I don't know. We've just been talking about it. I don't know whether it is or it isn't. I'll leave his head for now. We'll come back to that in a minute. Because what I'd like to do is add some detail to the wings here. So again, using a decent sized brush, now I'm down to a six. This is a number six. Come back into your cobalt blue. And with this, simply offer this up to the edges of the wings. I'm going to go darker than that. Make it very dramatic. Edges of the wings like this. Just pop the colour in. Rinse. Get rid of the drips. And then blend it into the edge like that. Whilst it's still wet, smaller brush. And now I want to come into 
this sludgy mix. This is a mixture of Prussian blue and burnt umber. And with this, look at this, whilst it's still wet, allow it to bleed and run. And that will give you smashing definition against the sky. Let's do it again with the others. So, cobalt blue. And the reason why I've broken this up into several patches like this, doing one or two wings at a time, I do not want this hard edge to dry. I've got to get in there, add the water, smudge it, smear it. You can also pick the colour up like this and pull it through. Look at that. That's a whole other option. Pick it up, pull it through. There, look. Good effect. And whilst that's wet, again, come back and pop in your darker edge so that that will bleed into the paler blue. If you want to, pick up the edge, flick it out. Again, back to the cobalt. And this is the fun of it, really, because underneath your hands, like this, you'll watch your dragon just appear. And it, it, it's just a drawing to start with, and suddenly you see this little creature appear from the page. So coming back to the dark colour, and we'll just pop it in there, all along the edge, so that it can bleed back into my cobalt. There we are. Pull that to the spine and do this. Back to the cobalt. Little bit at a time. This is another good reason for having several brushes in your hand, because of course you're not constantly dipping into the water and leaving all your lovely pigment in here. That would be such a shame. So have a couple of brushes to hand so that you can dabble with one, hold it in your hand and not be wasting pigment. I mean, this is how so many acrylic and oil painters work. So can we. So can we. It's a good tip. Let's use it. So the edges of the dragon's wing. If you would like to, you can then come into this area, get rid of the mask, just simply rub it away. Easy, easy. It really is so easy to use. Incidentally, once that becomes a little difficult to remove, that's when you know you need to replace your mask. So if it's starting to be a little bit edgy to come off the paper, that's the time that you need to replace your mask. Get rid of it by yourself and treat yourself to a new jar. Down here, his little face. And I think we'll do the same as we have with the rest of the body and we'll bring the magenta up through the spines here. Make sure my hands are dry. So coming through here, magenta spines. I think I need a little more water than that. The paint's too thick. Down through here. And I'm assuming that all of you know about the uh, masking fluid rule with the soap. Have yourself a nice little bar of soap when you're painting and make sure that you put soap on your brushes before you put them into the masking fluid. And that way you won't damage your brushes. It's easy. I think rather soap than fairy liquid. Fairy is a liquid and it stays that way and it also has salt in it so of course you don't want salt on your painting really or at least you want salt where you want salt. So it does affect the way the paint goes on the paper so I would say to you just stick with a bar of soap. To be able to give these scales depth and to put one on top of another. I'll have a really strange phrase. This will make you smile. To put a thing on a thing, you need a shadow under the thing. And as a consequence, what I need to do here is come in underneath every scale and just put in the shadow. Like that. That's all I'm doing. Each and every one. Again, 
I need to do them one at a time, or like this, just three, because should I travel my way down here, I'll find that that would have dried and I wouldn't be able to blend it. So just do what you can do given your conditions. So yes, in the winter, you'll be able to paint more and you would be able to probably whiz all the way down this front, but I'm not going to do that here under these lights. I think I'd be asking for trouble. So down here and here and blend each time. Shall we give him some features? We'll go back to our dark colour and with this I'd like to drop in eyelashes, his mouth, his nose. He's got some little hairs from his chin. He has some little hairs from his tail. And I just need to finally drop some shadow into his legs here. This leg's behind this leg, so there'd be shadow there. There'd be shadow in the crease of his leg there. And his legs are behind his tail, so consequently that would give me shadow there. Again, rinse, come in and blend. One hard edge, one soft edge. So just blend here. And then how about his tail? Of course, this is behind his body. This is behind that edge of his tail. Blend it. Simple. Come in. Gently, gently nudge it. Just like that. Nudge it. And finally, if you want to, you can add the last few details here under his chin. Some shadow. And we'll blend that. And then with the same brush and the blue on the brush, how about giving him some shadow on his body by simply coming in here, down, round, look at this. And it makes all the difference. And for that, you have to come in from the shadow side, the side that's in coming out into the light. That is the brush stroke to keep it wet. Rinse it, get rid of the pigment. This is the brush stroke that is going to blend it. And there you have this little dragon sitting on a rock with the moonlight shining down on him and he's looking to go to sleep. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.